In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. It's a joy to come back down to San Diego to bring you the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass here in uh, the feast, November 12th, Feast of St. Martin, Pope and Martyr. St. Martin was one of those great popes who stood against the emperor. He corrected the emperor, Emperor Constans of the East. Of course, Pope Martin was in Rome, and the emperor of the East was in Constantinople. And that emperor, um, he put out a decree that there was to be no discussion about the will of Christ. The will of Christ, because heresies has sprung up that said in Jesus Christ there was only one will. The one, the one will, neither human, uh, but only the divine will. And this is heretical, because we see in our Lord Jesus Christ there are two wills. That's the Catholic truth. There are two wills. There's the human will of Christ and the divine will. And we see in our Lord Jesus Christ, for example, in the Garden of Gethsemane, when He sweat blood, Three times, rivers of blood, seeing our sins, the sins of the human race. And our Lord asked, Father, if it's possible, let this chalice pass from me. But not as I will, but as thou willest. So that shows Christ in his human will. He perfectly submitted his human will to the will of the Father, to the divine will. And, and in this we see our Lord Jesus Christ, if He had to pray, and He's God, and St. Paul says He was heard for His reverence to God, the, that, that mystical, incomprehensible union of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost within the Blessed Trinity, yet Christ in His human nature was profoundly humbled before God the Father. This is something... Archbishop Lefebvre speaks about, and he just says, who can comprehend this humility of our Lord Jesus Christ before God the Father? And yet, that's possible because he has a human will, and he has a human nature. So, monophysitism said in Christ there was only uh, uh, one will, monothelitism, this, this heresy said there was only one nature. And these heresies that attacked our Lord Jesus Christ in the early church, they're still floating around. They're still floating around. You have many Protestant denominations who believe in Jesus Christ, but not that He's God. And other, uh, like the Mormons, say He is created a son and brother of Lucifer. And the Mormons even had to adapt their teachings because they, they were teaching that all the black people were children of Lucifer. And they had to adapt their teaching, of course, <laughs> when it wasn't politically correct anymore. So, uh, these heresies still float around. And the synthesis of all the heresies, of course, is modernism. And modernism today is the worst of all because it attacks our Lord Jesus Christ, it attacks all the levels of the Holy Catholic faith. And this is our battle now. And this is our crown now. This is our martyrdom now to fight for the faith, to stay faithful to Catholic teaching and tradition because it comes from the Blessed Trinity. It comes from our Lord Jesus Christ. And without this Holy Catholic faith, we cannot save our soul. We must believe all these truths of the faith. And that's what all, all those saints have done. We submit our mind, our heart, to all that God has revealed. That is the Catholic faith. And it's pride to stand up and say, well, I choose to believe in this, and I choose to believe in this, but I won't believe in the sacrament of confession. I won't believe in the, the doctrine of hell. Or I won't believe, as Benedict XVI said, in uh, limbo. Or as Pope John Paul II said, uh, there is no fires in hell. Of course, they're speaking as private theologians, but they're wrong. They're dead wrong. And uh, the heretics of the centuries have always attacked and picked and choose what to believe. Heresy in the Greek, eresis, 
uh, literally means to choose. So uh, one who is in heresy chooses what he wants to believe and rejects the other. But our Lord said, unless you become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. And that becoming like children is firstly in simply believing all that God has revealed. Children believe easily all their parents tell them, because they don't, they don't suspect that their parents would ever lie to them. But we know some parents are, you know, parents are human, and they can sin, and they can lie. But with God, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, He cannot lie, He cannot deceive. So we must be like children and, and, and believe all that God has revealed. The whole entire Catholic faith, from limbo to hell, to the highest cherubim in heaven, to the adoration of the Blessed Trinity, to the hyperdulia, that is the, the greatest veneration given to the Mother of God, higher than all the saints and all the angels. This is all part of the Catholic truth, and that is truth, and we must love the truth. It's a grace to love the truth, and St. Paul says towards the end of time, man will be given to love the lie. God will abandon them to love the lie, and that's our age, isn't it? The conciliar church, what a lie, what a joke. For example, uh, requiem masses in white vestments. This is the month of the holy souls, and it's a lie. It's a lie to hold white vestments when the soul of, let's just say, some relative, the priest is saying, well, he or she is in heaven, and the vestments are in white, and there's flowers on the altar. It's a lie. Pope Pius XII condemned the use of white vestments for the requiem mass. Why? Because these souls. Everyone, the priest might be saying in the novice order of church, well, he's in heaven. But the truth is, grandma or grandpa or uncle Jim or aunt so-and-so might be burning in purgatory and needing prayers. And with the white vestments, that's only used for canonized saints or for babies who died before the use of reason having been baptized. So the true Holy Catholic Church, guided by the Holy Ghost, does not lie. And that conciliar church is built on lies and heresy of Vatican II and the horrible new mass and the horrible new code of canon law which attacks so many principles of the faith. So, it was the great Saint Martin I, this Pope today, who stood up to the Emperor and said, he said, you have no right, Emperor, you have no right to forbid bishops and priests to settle this question on how many wills are in Christ, on the Catholic faith. And the emperor got very furious with him. He got very upset with him. And like many governments, tyrannical governments, who kill or crush or um, kill off those who speak the truth, and that includes our own history in the United States, how many presidents uh, have uh, have, have uh, <laughs> have um, silenced or put to death, especially under the administrations of previous administrations of hiding uh, murders, such as in Waco or 9-11. These, these things are well hidden and well, well uh, kept secret, the, the, the agendas of the powers that be. So... Pope, in, so Pope Martin I was no exception. And so Emperor Constans sent his soldiers to go and arrest the Pope in Rome. And the Pope was in the Lateran Church, and he was, he was ill, he was old, he was too sick to stand up and oppose these soldiers. They arrested him. They dragged the Pope from Rome, took him on a long, arduous journey back to Constantinople. And the emperor imprisoned him and fed him very poorly, hardly anything, in a cold prison that was filthy. And he was basically left alone, abandoned. The Pope of the Catholic Church in prison and abandoned. But at least he was a true Pope. At least he defended the Catholic truth and he defended the right of the Church to teach the Catholic faith 
and to discuss and settle heretical questions and condemn them. So that's a lot more than, than we have. I'd rather have a pope in prison, but who's, who's, who's strong in the faith than one on the throne of Peter who's causing so much scandal and leading many souls to hell. But that's what we have. But this, this great Pope Martin I, he died, of course, in the year 656 on November 12th, and he died a martyr. Cold, shivering, hungry, and very sick. And that's how he died, abandoned by all on earth. But he had the great consolation of heaven. So let's pray to St. Martin. Let's pray to him for that strong faith. Because in a way, in a way, many good Catholics today, traditional Catholics trying to stay faithful and save their soul, they are kind of exiled everywhere all over the earth. They have no parish. They have no school. They have no, no friends, even abandoned by many friends, and family also. And these things are in exile. They are very painful, but it's what our Lord is asking us to suffer. Everyone, all Catholics throughout the world, were suffering this terrible apostasy in the church. It's very painful. As Father Pfeiffer was telling telling the seminarians, we have 15 seminarians at Our Lady Mount Carmel, and he told them very, very bluntly, in our day also, we never expected to say Mass in an actual Catholic Church. <laughs> so Father Viper reminded the seminarians, if ever you're ordained a priest, don't expect the luxury of having to say Mass in a Catholic Church, with a beautiful altar and pillars and a nave and a transept and a baptistry. This is a luxury. But look at the apostles. Did they say Mass in a church? Not one of them. Not one of them. St. Peter. In fact, it was the other way around. <clears throat> where the apostles said Mass, such as St. Peter, in the house of, of the family of St. Agnes, and the family of St. Priscilla, those homes were turned into churches. And today they stand as basilicas. Same with St. Clement's. So, they never had a, a church to say Mass in. So, this is our situation now. How long is it going to last? There's a, you know, there's a, there's a verse in the Psalms that shows this longing and suffering. And it says, Usque quo Domine, usque quo. How long, O oh Lord, how long will this last? How long will you seem to abandon us? And this is, this we can really say this prayer. How long is this going to last? This apostasy, this uh, tyranny under, under bishops and popes who are seeped in modernism. How long are, are, are even our traditional Catholic bishops going to be cowardly and not teach the truth and not stand up to error the way they're supposed to? How long, O oh Lord, is this going to last? And that's our exile. This is a, it's a unique, it's a unique chalice it's a, that our, our God is asking us to drink. It's a unique cross that He's asking us to carry. And this cross is for all of us to carry. So let's really try to, to fulfill the Virgin of Fatima's request. Pray the daily rosary, something so simple, and yet even with that, many Catholics struggle. They even struggle with the basic prayers, but we've got to keep faithful. Daily rosary, daily offering of our duties of state and our sufferings of each day, the contradictions of each day, the worries of each day, and uh, the, the many crosses that come with each day, and temptations from the devil, from the flesh, from the world, from the whole spirit of the world, which is one of compromise. And this is very attractive, especially to the young people. The young people who are not strong in the faith, and who are not interested to read and study the holy truths of the faith, and the lives of the saints, and the teachings of the church. And that they must oppose the spirit of the modern world, how many of the poor youth 
they go with that easy, easy going religion. Everyone, all religions are just one big path to God. Just many different paths. And each religion is like a flavor added to the soup. And that is not the truth. That is not our Lord Jesus Christ. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. There is no other way to the Father but through me, Christ said. There's not many paths. There's no way we can save our soul as a Muslim, a Buddhist, a, a, a Greek schismatic. <clears throat> we cannot save our soul in these false religions, be it Mormonism or the millions of denominations of Protestantism. Nor can we save our soul in this conciliar modernist church. That's why we have to reject this modernist church which is with its modernist sacraments, its modernist religion and ceremonies. We want to stay Catholic and like children believe and fight on for the true religion that Christ established. And how do we know the true religion? By the four marks. The one holy Catholic apostolic church built on the apostles and will last till the end of the world. So that St. Athanasius said, even if Catholics who are faithful to tradition are reduced to just a handful, they still remain the true Church of Jesus Christ. And that's where we want to be. Even if we end up imprisoned and in a lonely cell to die and be forgotten, blessed be God. But God always consoles His friends. He always strengthens them in their trials. He never abandons His friends. He might let us suffer, he might let us carry the cross with him, but he never abandons us. In our Lord, he suffered on the cross an abandonment that we'll never be able to explain nor comprehend. That abandonment that he felt from the Father, we'll never comprehend that. But St. Thomas Aquinas says, our Lord will never let us feel abandoned even in the worst suffering, and a worst exile, in, and even in our death. He's always there pouring out His grace, and strengthens the souls of many saints, and many of His friends. And this is very true. How many souls turning to God and, he, and Our Lady, and they guide them. And how many deaths have died in great peace, and great union with God, uh, because they were always faithful and at least always prayed to the Mother of God. So, let's turn to St. Martin the First, a saint pope who was persecuted because he stood for the truth and the right for the Catholic Church to fight for the truth, to teach it and spread it. That right comes from Christ himself. And no president, no Supreme Court, no government can ever tell or crush the Catholic truth and that light. So we have to fight for this. So let's pray to the Mother of God that in this age of persecution on Catholic tradition, because many of these diocesan bishops, they'll allow the Latin Mass, no problem. But don't you dare say that Vatican II was wrong, loaded with heresy. Don't you dare teach that the new Mass is bad and takes souls to hell. And don't you dare oppose these popes of Vatican II. So it's a true tyranny over Catholic tradition. But they can never crush the truth. And we must always preach the same truths. Jesus Christ is God. He is the eternal High Priest. The only priest whose only prayer is pleasing to the Father. Not all false religions, only one prayer is pleasing to Him. That's the sacrifice of Christ on the cross. That's it. And all our prayers find value and are turned to gold when united to Christ on the cross. And that's what the Virgin Mary teaches us. She's always with the cross. Look at the miraculous medal that she asked St. Catherine Labore to have imprinted, and she'll give many graces through it, on the back of it, it shows the cross, and underneath the letter M, because Virgin Mary always is united to the cross. So that even today, and when the sacrifice of Calvary is reenacted in this little humble home here in San Diego, 
there will also be with us present in this room, in this house, the Virgin Mary, the Mother of God. She is always next to her Son, always. So she'll be here very soon with her Divine Son and the millions and millions of angels. So, our Lord Jesus Christ is the only Savior, and He is also King. And this is something Vatican II and these modernist bishops, they can't stand the idea of the social kingship of our Lord Jesus Christ. And yet this is what is most needed for our, our own country and all the countries of the whole world. The only remedy is the social reign of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is the union of church and state. That is that the state acknowledges and recognizes Jesus Christ as King and have his heart on the flag and have his name on our Constitution, and his rights defended. Not the First Amendment, which someday has to be abolished and replaced. The Catholic religion is the religion of this country, and Jesus Christ is King of our country, and all the laws must be conformed. The Supreme Court has a duty to obey the Ten Commandments. And this is, the, this is what the bishops should be teaching, but they're all liberal. They all believe in the separation of church and state. They all believe in the uncrowning of Christ the King. And that's the heart of the fight with Archbishop Lefebvre and modernist Rome. That really was the heart of the fight. He defended Christ as God and King, and Rome wanted to tear the crown off and, and reduce Christ to an equivalent with all the false religions. And we cannot tolerate that, ever. So we have to be... Uh, Love our Lord, and fight for Him, and pray. Pray for so many things, but especially the triumph of the Immaculate Heart, that finally we'll have a Pope to consecrate Russia. How long, O oh Lord, is this going to last? I don't know. The Arian heresy lasted over 150 years, 200 years, 300 years. The Protestant persecutions in Ireland, and in England, and Wales, lasted well over two to three hundred years. So how long is this going to last? We're only 53 years after Vatican II. It seems forever, but we don't know. How long is this going to last? I don't know. But we do know that the church will carry on, and the church needs good bishops, a good pope, and priests. That's the importance of our seminary in Boston, Kentucky, Our Lady of Mount Carmel. So pray for these, our seminary, pray for the seminarians, pray for the priests of the Catholic Resistance, pray for the Society of the Tenth Priests of the New Society to wake up and, just, uh, and not go along with these compromises with modernist Rome. So it's so much to pray for, but let's keep all these intentions in the daily rosary. Love that weapon. And as one Carthusian monk said, when we're in a hurricane, when we're in a storm, when all seems very dark, hold the hand of your mother. She'll guide us through it. She always does. So how do we hold her hand? It's the daily rosary, her brown scapular. Fight on, little flock. These are the weapons of our time, the rosary and the scapular, and the true faith and the true sacrifice of the Mass. O Mary conceived without sin, O Mary conceived without sin, O Mary conceived without sin, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen.